In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Today the Mass is offered for the people of the parish. And as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins and ask for the Lord's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, Moshach, Tubal, and Javan, to the distant coastlands that have never heard of my fame or seen my glory. And they shall proclaim my glory among the nations, they shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries, to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels. Some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. And he will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And they will say, we eat and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves will be cast out. And the people will come from the east and the west and from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. Gospel of the Lord. In the gospel today, we hear someone ask Jesus, Lord, will only a few people be saved? Jesus does not answer this question directly, but helps us to understand that being saved is a choice which we make for ourselves. Jesus said, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. By answering in this way, he gives us hope upon hope that entering through the narrow gate is possible. By telling us to strive to enter, Jesus is leaving the door open to all that it is possible by the grace of God to enter the kingdom of heaven, but we must do our part, therefore strive. This example came to mind. This time of year, there is a lot of talk about returning to school. Last Monday, we at St. Thomas welcomed our grade school students back. And that day, their first day, their first all-school activity was to attend Mass together. While vesting for Mass in the sacristy, I asked the children who were serving with me if they had a good summer, and they all agreed they did. And when I asked them if they were happy to be back in school, they also agreed they'd wish the summer wasn't over yet. <laughs> Sounds familiar. For our children, going back to school with all its rules, classes, and homework can feel like passing through a narrow gate, especially after coming off a carefree summer where they had much more freedom to do what they wanted to do. Well, that's the point of the narrow gate. It can be difficult, and most times it is, but God wants us to persevere. Another example. If we didn't attend school, how could we begin to grow in our knowledge? And without knowledge, how could we learn how to refine our God-given gifts and talents? And how could we prepare ourselves to fulfill the will of God for our lives? The path to the narrow gate is different for each of us, and it can also change depending upon where we are on our life's journey. But God doesn't leave us alone to stumble through life wondering if we are following the path. 
the path to the narrow gate. He is there to guide us along the way. He does this with his commandments and scripture and with guides who went before us, the saints, and people in our lives who can help guide us, just to name a few. And if we think about it, every time we pray the Our Father prayer Jesus taught us, we are asking God, our Father, to help guide us on our life's journey. Let's take a look at the words of the prayer, our petitions, the last four lines in which we know so well. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now that's the narrow gate. The first petition is, give us this day our daily bread. We are asking God to provide food for our spiritual needs. We have daily prayer, we have mass, we have the Eucharist. As well, we are asking God for food for our physical needs, so we have the strength to carry out our mission here on earth. The next petition. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We are asking God to forgive us our sins, and we are promising to forgive those who have sinned against us. That's a very hefty request and promise to God, because if we cannot forgive others, we cannot fully realize God's forgiveness in our lives. The last two petitions may be the most difficult to understand. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. To deliver us from evil, we are asking God to give us the grace to help us with those parts of our lives that draw us away from him. Temptation. Temptation is one of those things which draw us away from God. Temptation is a tricky thing. God is all good. God is pure love. God does not tempt us or lead us into temptation. What God does is he gives us free will to choose for ourselves. When we ask God to lead us not into temptation, we are asking him for the grace to avoid or rid ourselves of what tempts us away from following him. Paul, in his letter to the Hebrews, reminds us of one of the ways God helps us to avoid temptation is through discipline. He writes, My children, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. At first, I really struggled with his statement, with St. Paul's statement, but then I thought about it and I realized St. Paul was speaking from experience. Remember when St. Paul was on his way to Damascus to capture and imprison Christians? And he was knocked to the ground by a bright light and God spoke to him saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Then God blinded Paul for three days before he sent Ananias to open his eyes. St. Paul is reminding us that sometimes God allows us to have trials in our lives to help us see more clearly, to help us see more clearly his plan for our lives. One thing we must never forget, God is pure love. He created us because he loves us. And we are taught if God forgot us, forgot us for even a second, we would cease to exist physically and in the minds of all who knew us. God is with us always, in times of joy and in times of trial. Therefore, when St. Paul writes, my children do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him, he is reminding us to hold on to our faith in God. The Greek word for discipline is padia. Padia can mean more broadly training or education. Our Heavenly Father allows training or education in our lives 
to bring us back to him, to trust in his faithfulness. I can remember a time in my career when I had a young family with all the responsibilities of purchasing a house, having a new car payment, and credit card debt. It all came crashing in on me in the early 80s when our economy went into a recession and I was laid off from my good paying job. I remember asking God, why did this happen? During the next two and a half years, we sold our car. I bought an older car to drive. I worked every odd job I could find to make ends meet. And my wife went back to work part time while we were raising two children. During that time, it came to me, I could continue working odd jobs, and sometimes I was working as many as three odd jobs, one which took me out of town all week up to Chicago. But that wasn't leading me to a career and I needed to go back to college. But how was I going to accomplish that with the hours my wife and I were working, and where was the money for college to come from? Then came a call from my former employee. They had created a new program to hire employees back who had successfully completed the four-year machinist apprentice program. And they were sending them to Bradley to complete a bachelor's degree, which I accepted. We never lost faith, even though we could not see where God was leading us. God took care of us during that very stressful time in our lives and when we look back on it, it was a time of great joy as well. It was a time when my son was born. St. Paul tells us, at the time, discipline seems like cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. God continues to present times of trial and times of joy in all our lives. So no matter what the trial is we may be going through, maybe it's work-related, school, an illness, a spiritual battle, remember what advice St. Paul gives us. He tells us to strengthen our drooping hand and our weak knees, make straight paths for our feet, that what is lame may, be dis lame may not be disjointed, but healed. In other words, we should work through our trials the best way we can. And by the grace of God and with his help, we will find joy even in times of trial. As we learned in the gospel today, Jesus's prayer for us all is that with him at our side and by the grace from God, we should strive to enter the kingdom of heaven through the narrow gate. Maybe one of the questions we can ask ourselves, it's something that no matter what we do, we can ask ourselves a little test. If I do this, will it bring me closer to Christ? And sometimes that will cause us to have to go through the narrow gate. May you know Jesus' love and share it with others today and always. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us present our prayers and petitions. For all members of the Holy Church of God, that through suffering and endurance, they may come to the peace of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the governments of the nations, that they will respect religious freedom and allow their people to hear Christ's invitation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost a desire for the things of heaven, that they may retain the fervor of faith and the joy of the sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered at this Eucharistic altar, that we may finally come to take our place of peace in the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, that they may find the eternal life in Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, especially Merv Zuckel, mother of Cheryl Appleboy, Patrick McGlaw, Jack Stripsa, uncle of Dave Stripsa, and Downs, Jose Rosa. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safeguarding of our religious liberty and for priestly vocations, we pray. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he himself humbled, he humbled himself and was born of a virgin. And by the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Louis our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only to say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We think about the, uh, what is required for us to be saved. Um, the, um, we seek for that narrow way, but we also have great help, and part of that help comes in the person of the Blessed Mother, who is a protector, a patroness for us. Uh, let us turn to our Mother with confidence, um, and we always ask for her help, especially in the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with our lives. Thanks be to God. And for those taking communion to the homebound. May Almighty God bless those who carry the body and blood of Christ, our absent brothers and sisters. May this sacrament and our union of prayer be a source of strength for them through Christ our Lord. Amen.